Today on Monkey Life, Alison's called in to rescue two abandoned marmosets, and she's shocked at their living conditions. Wow. Look at the filth. Ugh, it's just disgusting. And newly arrived chimp Toprish is introduced to potential new pals. You ready, Peppa? But things don't go to plan. Plus, they heard it on the grapevine. A fruity feast goes down a treat with the barn woolly monkeys. Monkey World in Dorset, buried deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr. Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and unwanted primates from all over the world. I know, this is a big leap of faith. The park provides a home for more than 260 monkeys and apes from 24 different species. It's first light on a Saturday morning, and Alison is preparing to set off on yet another rescue resulting from the British pet trade. Here we go again. It's urgent, it's a rush, and it's the crack of dawn, and we're off to Surrey to go get two more marmosets. It's tragic. Her mission follows a phone call from the RSPCA, informing her about two marmosets discovered living in the bedroom of a flat in Caterham, Surrey. The tenant who owned them was evicted, and the landlord allowed the monkeys to stay until someone could be found to care for them. After a three-hour drive, Alison arrives to link up with local RSPCA inspectors and the police. We've just met the landlord. The RSPCA and the police have attended just to make sure everything goes smoothly, so now we just have to go find the two marmosets, see what we have. The police have discovered the names of the two marmosets from the man who lived at the flat. They're called Caesar and Bud. If it's OK, I'd like to go in and take a few photographs yeah. and just sit and look at them for a minute or two. Alison cautiously opens the door of the bedroom where the two primates have been living. Don't even know where you are. Oh, there you are. She's shocked at the conditions. Wow. Look at the filth. The marmosets have had the run of the bedroom. There's filth and debris everywhere. Ugh, it's just disgusting. In every level, just disgusting. Are you Caesar? Caesar man? Good boy. So this room, if you could smell it, really stinks. The filth from the marmosets running loose in here is just solid everywhere. This is about one of the worst conditions I've seen in a long time. This is really disgusting. It sucks. It's wrong. And I just can't believe it continues on today in the UK. Here you go, little man. The two marmosets are different species. Caesar, the larger of the two, is a Jeffroy's marmoset, while Bud is a common marmoset. Surveying the conditions they've been living in leads Alison to think they may have underlying health issues. The common marmoset looks like it's got a kink in its tail, which is a sign of rickets or nutritional bone disease. Um, we'll go through the kitchen and see if we find any appropriate vitamin supplements, but they need fresh air, they need a clean environment. The only thing that they've got going for them right now is companionship of their, I say, own kind, similar kind. Um, and that's about it. Both marmosets are very agitated, and getting them into a travel box will be a challenge. I'm stunned. Hmm. One word, isn't it? Uh, this is going to take some doing to catch them up, actually. Alison manages to contain Bud in the large cage, while Caesar continues to run wild in the bedroom. It's OK. It's OK. Marmosets may be small, but they're lightning fast. 
not sure. Eventually, Bud is cornered. Yeah, I don't want to stress this one too much more. One down, just Caesar to go. Okay. Rock and roll. Warmed up now. So, would you like to go in the cage? I don't think you will. Boy. But Caesar is proving even more evasive than Bud. Time for plan B. Alison allows Caesar into the corridor outside the bedroom. With no cage to hide behind and nowhere for him to leap, she stands more chance of netting the lively marmoset. And it works. Finally, both marmosets are safely boxed in their travel crates. Now they can begin the journey back to Dorset. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Hug. You, sir. <laughs> Dirty handshake. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All sorted. Um, we'll see what happens with the owner and whether he tries to demand them back or not. But mainly, we, you know, I'm just here for the monkeys and we'll get them back to the park. Quick, smart, get them sorted and settled because the um, last two days have been pretty stressful for two tiny monkeys that have been left neglected for clearly a very long time. So, time for some TLC back at the park. Monkey World has had an influx of rescued marmosets in recent years and space is now at a premium. But the park will do everything they can to give these two the life they deserve. Back in Dorset, at the Bachelor Chimp Enclosure, the primate care team are busy distributing a large donation of watermelons for the 14 boys who make up the group. There's plenty for everyone. But to ensure all the chimps enjoy the fresh fruit and not just the high rankers, the melons are being carefully placed and hidden. The majority are whole, but some have been cut into smaller pieces to give the low rankers a better chance to grab their share. Jester, Buxom and Mojo lead out the rowdy bunch, who all make excited calls as they spot the treat. Jester wastes no time snaffling a whole watermelon. But his half-brother, Buxom, is more interested in asserting his dominance, starting with Turkish Charlie. The dominant males do sometimes get bad press. You know, they're seen as the aggressive ones running around and beating people up, but they do have the softer side. They can be very caring. As I say, we do often see them grooming some of the low rankers and spending time with them because that is equally as important for them as going around and throwing their weight. They do also need to form those coalitions. Otherwise, they're not going to have the backings to stay into that dominant position. It's not just all about them being these big dominant males running around and stomping their feet. They can actually have a soft side where they will spend time to, to create those bonds with the others in their group. But today, the more dominant males are playing true to type and hoarding as many watermelons as they can. Mojo's halfway through the first of the two he's snared, while Jester shows that managing and keeping two melons can be tricky. Buxom, having finished his display, has bagged three melons and has no intention of sharing with anyone. Paco, however, is quite content eating the scraps and leftovers. But it's not just the high rankers scoring well in the fruity feast today. The boys at the bottom of the pile get in on the action too. Keto, Freddy, Rocky, everyone uh, that normally, you know, we wouldn't expect to do so well in a feed, did brilliantly. And even Gypsy, who he hung back a little bit in the release, so he came out about five minutes later, came out of the enclosure and still managed to find a watermelon, which is why it's so important for us to hide the food around in loads of different locations, because it goes to show that even those individuals that come out later still get a good chance of getting their food. Yeah, it was nice to see the low rankers do so well. After being on the other end of Buxom's dominant display, Charlie's bided his time. At the bottom of the pile, he rarely gets involved in group feeds, and today he sat watching while the others gorged on the treat. But he's had his eye on a whole melon the others missed. He makes his move, and success! It's all his. 
He's not a fan of many vegetables. He's a very fussy eater. He mostly just likes his fruit. He does quite like leek. That is one vegetable he does really enjoy. Um, but yeah, you will often see he'll just wait until a lot of the more dominant males have moved on before he'll start grabbing bits of food. So um, he is quite a cautious male. After the initial excitement, all the chimps have managed to get some watermelon. And all that's left are the empty skins. Following an early morning start and a 250-mile round trip to Caterham in Surrey, Alison has arrived back at the park with the two rescued marmosets. Oh. Hi. Hi. Sorry, more new arrivals, but I think it's the right thing. Caesar and Bud were living in the bedroom of a flat in filthy conditions. In the guy's bedroom. No, like I can't, no, I can't even describe. I've... In the last five years, Monkey World has taken in 45 primates from the UK pet trade. Some came from owners who couldn't cope with the care and demands of looking after the small monkeys, and others were confiscated following cruelty cases. I've got a waiting list at the office right now of about, well, it's 55 or more individual marmosets. The last couple of weeks, I haven't caught up with all of the other requests that's come in, so it might even be heading to 60 individuals now. But at the park right now, we've got at least 39 marmosets on site. Um, and we're bursting at the seams. Caesar and Bud are temporarily taking over one of the bedrooms, normally reserved for another pair, until Alison can find a more permanent solution. Once Karen has weighed the two marmosets, they're released into their new home. They've had a stressful couple of days, and it may take some time for them to settle in. Unbelievably nervous and um, a bit scatty. Um, Condition-wise, not terrible, but, um, yeah, very flighty right now. There's been a lot of leaping around, a lot of jumping around, but they've also had a very big day. Um, if they've lived in that house for three years, it's a lot of change. There's other animals in this house that they're getting used to the sights and the smells and the, uh, the sounds of, so it's a lot to take in, really. They've kind of just settled now, um, and I think as we pull back and there's, there's less people in the house and they just get time to just settle in, have a look around, get some food, and um, hopefully they'll settle down fine. For Alison, it's another frustrating episode, and one she sees far too often. Something's gonna have to change. I can't build a whole new marmoset house for more victims of the pet trade when nothing's changing. It's just relentless. Um, and somebody's gonna have to take notice. I, I'm not quite sure what to do. The team will need to make a long-term plan, not only for Bud and Caesar, but also for all the other marmosets on Alison's waiting list. It's a lovely warm afternoon, and at the Barn Woolly Monkey enclosure, the group are about to get a juicy treat. Freshly harvested grapes on the vine. So we spread the food far and wide, nice, nice and up high as far as we could get it. Mainly so everyone gets a little bit of everything and we want to make sure that no one's being chased away from any food and there's plenty to go around. But we also want to encourage them to do lots of natural behaviours. Uh, suspension feeding is really important with the woolly monkeys. They have that really impressive prehensile tail. So making them use that and hang from it and hang their whole body weight from it is really impressive to see. It's really great to see them actually moving and not just sitting on their bottoms. <laughs> The eager woolly monkeys rush straight out into the enclosure. The noisy chirping and trilling are happy, excited sounds prompted by the bounty of grapes. And it's a race to see just how many they can eat at once. Very excited reaction. As soon as they saw the grapes, that was it. The trilling was non-stop, absolutely deafening, and it's been really nice to hear. Uh, they do get really excited for food anyway, but the reaction has just been unbelievable. There are six members of this group, three males and three females. At 29 years of age, female Quapper is the eldest. 
Then there's Paquita and her daughter, nine-year-old Isla. The boys are youngster Zavi and the baby of the group, two-year-old Cassius. They all come together under the leadership of one large, bubbly character. Chippy is the dominant male over here and he's absolutely wonderful. He's just a big hunk of love and he's just absolutely amazing. He's um, a gentle giant. He does like to show off how big and impressive he is. He does a lot of displaying and shaking the mesh, but he does do lots of lovely snuffling uh, to the rest of his group and making sure everyone's nice and happy. He doesn't really like sharing his food, so he takes them all off to eat by himself and then comes back to get some more, whereas the others will eat as they go and sort of all hang around as a group where Chippy doesn't share food, so he often just takes himself off. But yeah, he is definitely in charge of this group and he's um, a really impressive woolly monkey. One member of the group has been piling on the pounds recently. Paquita's daughter Isla is looking a little rotund. The primate care staff think she may be pregnant again. But predicting the due date of an expectant woolly mum is notoriously difficult. There is no definite way of telling, but she is looking particularly round at the moment, and I don't think it's just all the grapes that she's eaten. Um, but I can never, we can never be 100% sure, and we, don't, we never know what's going to happen. Isla has given birth here at the park before, and her young son Cosmo um, has now graduated over at Top Woolies and is doing really well. But as we did have to step in and actually hand rear him, we do keep a close eye on uh, Isla. Only time will tell if Isla is eating for two. But one thing is certain, just like the rest of the group, She's got a craving for grapes today. Across the park, in the newly renovated pavilions, a recent new arrival has been causing quite a commotion. Alison and wildlife vet John Lewis collected female chimp Toprish from Turkey a few weeks ago. She'd been living in a zoo 50 miles south of Istanbul, after being illegally taken from the wild and sold as a pet. She lived with a family who gave her up when she became an adult and difficult to keep. She's never lived with other adult chimps, and now, at around nine years old, she has the opportunity for a home with others of her own kind, in Bart's group. In the first few days, Toprish settled in well at the park, so the team decided to start slowly introducing her to members of the group. Initial introductions were in adjoining bedrooms with mesh in between, to avoid full physical contact, as chimps can be extremely volatile. You ready, Peppa? Low-ranking Peppa was the first chimp the team chose to meet Toprish through the mesh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Whoa, whoa. It was the first time she'd come face to face with a full-grown adult chimp since being stolen from the wild and she voiced her disapproval. Sadly, her background has left her desperately lacking in chimp etiquette. Toprish is clearly, like, freaked out, and whether it's just frightened or whether she truly has that bad of an attitude, but she's being very aggressive and full-on towards Peppa, who's dutifully ignoring her. Either she's gonna calm down, or eventually we'll have to call her bluff and open a door, and somebody will thump her, and she'll have to learn some manners. The team persevered, introducing one of the group's older and calmer males, Mickey, alongside Pepper. This time, things were a lot quieter, possibly because Toprish recognised Mickey as a male, and therefore a potential mate. What do you think, Peps? I think so. I think that's probably... Leave it on a positive. Always a good thing to do. The pair were clearly quite intrigued by each other, and the team were encouraged enough for Toprish and Mickey to move to the next level. We're starting to see more positive interaction between them at the mesh, and we're now going to go with a full contact introduction, so opening the slide so that they can actually physically get to each other. Fingers crossed, it's all going to go well. Jeremy was prepared in case things got out of hand. Are you all going to be nice? I want everybody to be nice. Toprish seemed relaxed and unfazed with Mickey next door. But as the slide opened, it all kicked off. Mickey came through like a whirlwind, puffed up and heading straight for the new female. Instead of being submissive, Toprish gave as good as she got. 
it was left for Jeremy to intervene. Things calmed down pretty quickly. Mickey had made his point. Are you taking charge? Are you taking charge, mister? It was a lesson learned for Toprish. Smart enough to know not, not to be to stuck in, the, in one yeah. end room. She'd you know, stay in the corner. Since that meeting, the team have continued to give Toprish mesh contact with various members of the group. And it seems there's one chimp's company she prefers. Pepper. So today, the team are going to give a full introduction another go. Today she's going to meet Peppa face to face. So she has been alongside of her on a few occasions and actually it's gone from Toprish being aggressive, Peppa puffing up and slamming the mesh, to them actually sort of having quite a nice greeting at the mesh. So we're hopeful that when we open the door this time, Toprish has actually learned enough over the past week or more to have a little bit more chimp etiquette rather than just sticking her tongue out at people. You know, it's small steps, so today's the next step. If all goes well, it'll be a positive experience for Toprish, resulting in a friend and ally. But it's not a done deal. Peppa may feel she needs to exert her dominance. Good girl, Peppa. She's more interested in the food than the new chimp. It's good. You show some respect. Good girl. A slightly bemused Toprish stays put, keeping her distance, but more importantly, not overreacting. Excellent job. She's just happy to sit and observe Pepper, which is progress of sorts. Toprish is wary. Pepper's got the upper hand. That's all good. I think it's a good thing to end on a positive note so that Toprish knows if she's respectful. She can be with one of the other big chimps and it's not going to be a problem and keep trying to build a little bit further until she actually makes positive good contact with somebody. But not bad for today. Today's meeting was encouraging and Toprish may be learning how to be a chimp again. She's heading in the right direction, but with 14 others to meet face to face, there's still a long way to go. Next time on Monkey Life. A first for the park with the birth of a baby for rare Gwenon couple, Nia and Benny. And Alison is delighted. It's a bit of a voyage of discovery, not only for them, but for us too. Plus, breakfast for the orangutans. But it's all a bit puzzling.